Now, 26 years ago when I started teaching, I was invited to a special event run by a big, wealthy city bank. And I was a young teacher, um, just started in the profession, and one of the bankers came up to me and said, ah, oh, Mr. Verbeeson, very nice to meet you. Now, just remind me, what is it that you do? And I said, well, I'm a, I'm a teacher. And he said, oh. Uh, and after a pause, said, weren't you able to get a, a proper job? <laughs> Many years later, when I became a head teacher 12 years ago, somebody was speaking to me and said, oh, very nice to meet you. Uh, what, what, tell me, what is it that you do? And I said, well, I'm a head teacher. He said, oh, I say, very good. Yes, that's very interesting. And whereabouts, do you, whereabouts is your school? And at the time, I said it was in East London. And the person looked startled at me and said, oh, missionary work. A makeover's underway at Salisbury School in North London, where the new executive head, Trevor Averbeeson, is a convert to the calming effects of purple. In early 2007, Enfield LEA made national headlines when Salisbury became the first state school to privatise its management. This is a snapshot of its first six months in control. Salisbury is one of the lowest achieving secondaries in Enfield and had been going nowhere for years. We're kind of in between a couple of the, the local schools. So we're still caught in that area that we want to break free from. On the version with English and maths, it's been basically flatlining for a number of years. The figures were just too low, down around the 11% mark. And that, I think, indicated to me and to, to other governors that that needed to improve. Edison's latest recruit is showing round his new boss. And, 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 you know, we're just subtly keeping the Edison um, no, I think it's, thing. I think it's not in your face. Oh, it's the colour. They are turning purple. <laughs> and um, we, we had all the planting redone. Oh, you know, just nice, because yeah. Paul Lincoln started Edison UK yeah. four years ago. He's a former head of education in Essex. It's a more pleasant yeah. environment, isn't it? <clears throat> <laughs> and I said to Jessica and Angela, don't you think we should just go for another colour? And they said, yeah, we should. Right. What colour? <laughs> don't no. think it's just going to have to be purple. <laughs> we really couldn't think of another one that did the same job. I noticed your learning pledge had changed a bit. Edison oh, UK nice. is a small yeah. company <laughs> of former heads and local authority advisers based in Colchester. To, to no, reflect yeah. what you'd written. I'm going to see if there are posters on the... Well, damn, everywhere I'm going to look now, they're not, they're not going to have the posters <laughs> up. Edison is being paid £1.2 million from school funds over three years to do what the LEA couldn't, turn the school around. It coincides with a major LEA building programme, turning the current split site into one. So, where are we going? We're going to um, year seven. Q42. Although the change has been portrayed as a private sector takeover, the LEA is still fully involved, providing teaching and learning support and closely monitoring the contract. Can I talk to you after school? Yeah, after school. I'll catch up with you then. Hello, how are you? Improvement at a school like Salisbury is always fragile to a degree that it might not be in a school where you have a much more stable staffing situation. Um, and when the head uh, resigned and because he'd got a post elsewhere, that was in the November, we knew we weren't likely to be able to appoint another head quickly or easily. One, because there's not that many heads around and, and Salisbury is a, a challenging school, but also because it's being reduced to the six forms of entry on the one site, which will mean that oh, it will attract a lower salary. And there's a huge amount of work involved in managing that move. So it wasn't necessarily a hugely attractive proposition for anybody. I just reckon they put the posters up for me when I came round. <laughs> no, 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 here they are, look. 
<laughs> Recognition and reward and yeah, the sanctions. Yeah, yeah. The contract's very clear with Edison about in three years time, three years from the contract starting, they will be handing the school on to, well, it may be themselves, they may continue to do it, I don't know yet, this, that decision has been made. They may be handing on to a more traditional appointment of a head teacher and what they'll hand over is a school that's in much better shape, that's had all the building work completed, it's running smoothly and satisfactorily and the results have gone up. So what, which, what we think we're buying is a, an improvement package for the pupils that says in three years' time they'll be doing better than they were three years previously. The first we knew that we were going to be managed by a private company was, was during January, February time. Then the tendering process happens, so we didn't actually know who was going to be running us until the day before the Easter holiday. So we, we knew that when we came back after the Easter break, which was two weeks long, we would be in the hands of a new management company. We didn't know who they were. So that was a very unsettling, to say the least, time. The two sort of building blocks of what we do in terms of school improvement are around building the leadership capacity intentionally throughout our work with the school. Um, making sure that the learning environment and the culture and the ethos for students is very positive and, are, and build that on values and a very strong code of conduct. And those are the two things that we focus on from the outset of any partnership work that we do. And then uh, we move to looking at the three sort of big processes that are going to impact on uh, student satisfaction, student achievement, and they are the quality of teaching for learning, um, how staff use assessment data to inform you know, the you know, assessment on the progress of the students to inform what they're going to teach them next. And the last thing is the quality of the students' support systems and the links with the family and the community. The experience that Edison have had in America, they worked with about 100 schools. What they've realised is that there's more the same about all of those schools than there is different and they've developed a, a design. And I think that, you know, typically in the UK over the years, I mean, I've been ahead three times now, but each time you go to a different school, you do it differently. But when Tesco's go and open a new successful store, they do it the same. You know, with a bit of a course, you're facing one way in the town and you've got certain kind of bits which are local, but basically it's the same product. And Edison have realised that actually it's the same. And the closer you are to their design, the closer you would be to greater improvement. The company has a contract. The, the chair of governors in particular is quite, you know, clear about, right, we've got to hit these milestones. And um... Yeah, in one sense, yeah, we've got to hit these milestones, but actually, I mean, if there was no contract, we'd have said, right, what are we going to do about school improvement and where are we going to go? It's, it's and... going to be the same, of course, but it's the timescales, which I think it puts a kind of... It's a good thing, but it puts an immediacy to it, yeah. which is much quicker Actually, than you might otherwise very, have... Yeah, it's a very subtle way, you see, of, of reimposing the strength of the local authority. See, if, in it the is, other local authorities... <laughs> in the other local authority schools, the heads will be going... Oh, yeah, yeah. what's it today, then? Yeah. <laughs> that, that's, that's we have a, got an improvement issue. What was it? Yeah, <laughs> that, that's, the, that's what the point I was making, because whereas, you know, Graham might come to me and say, Trevor, you've only given us nine days to do this, and I go, oh, fair dues, look, give it to me at the end of half term. You instantly put another few weeks into it, whereas because this said the end of May, yeah. and, and you know that the chair on Wednesday is going to say, do you have it? Mm. Um, then mm. I think it reflects a huge it's pressure, isn't it? Because it is urgent. Now I'm just going to do a, a welcome. Yeah. Trevor's brought with him Angela Gartland and Jessica Ward, senior managers from his previous school. They're also now contracted to Edison. If you can then go and sit down. just unplugged itself? You select that from those cards which you think are essential criteria for teaching and which you think are desirable criteria for teaching your lessons. And if you can just spend five minutes doing that, thank you. Five minutes. Yep, do it now. But you have to believe in them that they can do it. Then You get more money if you work in inner London, quite substantially more money than outer London, and we're right on the border. So... Yeah, that's a draw. Why, why work in a challenging school in Enfield when you can work in a challenging school in Harringay and get, I think it's three and a half, four thousand pounds more? We're going to come back at least twice a year, but it's going to be a self-review of each subject area 
where the head of that subject area, or academy as it'll be next year, works with somebody from SLT, from Edison or the LEA, to look at what's going on in classes, that there's peer review so that you're looking at each other's teaching as well. And at the end of that process, strengths and weaknesses assessment of the faculty as a whole, not you individually, and a report about what good things are happening in the faculty, what issues need to be improved. Again, it's not rocket science. It happens in many, many schools. It's regarded well by Ofsted, but we have to do it regularly. A number of schools that have... Um been in Ofsted categories and work really hard to come out and they just sort of sit above that on that new plateau and you know, it doesn't take very there's a very thin line between success and failure in education and it doesn't take very much for a school like that to be tipped back in again because it's constantly battling against a number of quite challenging environmental issues. Off you go then, young man. You stay there and put your blazer on. You're looking good. So why aren't you wearing that? Because I thought we were to wear black. Oh, well, you Campus thought wrong, didn't you? No, no, not loads of people wear it. I've seen, me, I've seen okay. three other people this morning and I've had the same conversation with them. Oh, Edison right. reward the students and they reward them financially as well as with things like merits and all of those sorts of things. But they actually give them financial rewards, which for our students in particular is is great, they think that's wonderful. Give me a name, Rebecca. Like oh, yeah. Go on off you go. Um, Ten. Name, Again. They're actually giving rewards for attendance, which is something that we have to improve on in school. And Trevor's offered £100 for, for every child who does 100% attendance for the whole year. Black shoes on Monday, please. He's also offered £1,000 for the best tutor group's attendance, so they can go on a trip which they won't have to pay for. And, and obviously, the, the, when you're talking that sort of money, it, it has a real impact on the students. I, I think there was something in the air yesterday. What do you think? Well, I hope there there was, the, not there today. Because there were a couple of fights on the other side as well. It was certainly lively yesterday, wasn't it? Yeah, but I, I really think that there was, there was like the air pressure or something. It felt like you know a, what we a need less to nice do? day. We need a good downpour of rain. Yeah. That will dampen their spirits. <laughs> So well, if you can, can organise that. The real change stuff won't start to impact, I predict, until January next year, because the honeymoon period will be over by then. And then the deep change, the going deeper, will start to kick in. And Included in the improvement package are training sessions from Edison advisors. Because unlike any other system where you go off on a course and you come back and some people don't have to do it, you know, it's taking these middle managers and the other staff with you, that it's about um, making sure that um, everybody buys a ticket for the long journey, not just those who fancy it. It's been a perennial problem for the school, is, is have, having to develop the skills in middle leaders who are relatively inexperienced yes. and investing a lot of time into those people. And of course, the, what happens then is that the best ones who you develop the most then move on to promotion. What do you know about your school? Which one of those is having an impact on it being difficult to do what you're doing at the minute? Any offers? OK, Jim. There's, there's one of those that jumps out for me. The quality of teaching and learning is it has an impact on so many others. OK. Look, watch. This is magic, look. And I didn't plant him, honestly. That's it. Yeah. That's the key, you know? Because many leadership teams think that it's the cohort, it's the parents, but actually the single most important influential on raising standards in schools is that one. And that's something that you'll be addressing this term and next term, looking at what's the quality of teaching look like now, where do you want it to be in a year's time, how are you going to move it there and how are you going to take people with you to get it there? The training that you've just been giving them, is that sort of brought in from America or...? No, no, no. No, I wrote it. As with the team, yeah. Mm. It's ours. We, I mean, we use good things that the Americans have, um, that our American colleagues have written, if they work for us. But if they don't, then we change them or use our own material. <laughs> Morning, John. <laughs> You're looking very bohemian, if I may say so. <laughs> the, the number of kids on here, have we? It's, if we, are we kind of hundred percent sure that's the number that went yes. into the January seven thing or whatever it's called, Form Seven? Yeah. So there's no, no, no. no.
no, no, ch oh, yeah. no chance of an uh, improvement. No. We got to work. We got to work this year to make sure the role is tighter than this or accurate. Yeah. And the back page has got the headline figures. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> the approximate. Approximate headline figures. Good set of results. Happy with those? Yeah. Excellent. Well done. I was well really, really scared this morning. Oh. That is really significant, isn't it? Uh, yeah. Well, if you if it's 22 percent, then it's literally doubled, doesn't it? Yeah. It was 11. So, yeah. So, oh, well done. Yeah, that's good. Mm -hmm. That's really good. The GCSE exams were taken just three weeks into Edison's tenure. I've got a kid here. He's got one GCSE. That's all he's got. But he's got a GCSE. Yeah. For you. Yeah. Things like that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's the con that's that constant tension between do you, do you enter them all and one just gets one, which is great for him in one sense, but it brings down our average, and that's the tension about the results, isn't it? It, it brings down the average because it adds to the number of people that are, that are on the list to be entered, you know. Trevor's brought in two more senior managers from his old school. Marit, would you like a drink? A tea or coffee? What we have to do over the three-year period is take us from being below other similar schools of a similar background, similar free school meal background, <clears throat> to being in the upper quartile, so to being in the top 25% of similar schools. And I think some of what they're wanting us to do is to get up into the top 5%. We've got a contractual obligation to do that, you know, or suffer the uh, slings and arrows of the fines that may result. Fines? Um, I think the way that the contract has worked out is that if we hit some of the, if we hit these targets, we get the, you know, agreed figure. If, if we don't hit the targets, there's, for each one of the targets, there's a small three or four percent, you know, financial penalty. Yeah, financial penalty. Yeah. And, like the company, the salaries of Trevor and his deputies are dependent on hitting the targets. So we're at 36 is the overall 5A to C and 25 for the including English and Maths, yeah. which is that's quite remarkable really, isn't it? That's really very good. The big opportunity we've got in the coming year is this time that we've freed up at the end of the day for tutors to meet with their groups in, in like small groups of five. The year nines and elevens probably are the ones that we want to most focus on and make sure that we've got data for the tutors to really work through week by week with those people. And they've, they've in effect, every, every year 11 kid is virtually being mentored through the year from September. And we've, I think we've really got to make sure that, that, that we do something really constructive with that. Because one of the things which occurs to me that we've got to kind of work this term coming to get the year 11 role to be as accurate as it possibly can be, so that we're, you know, we're not, we've not got your kids on this list this time next year who've really not been in school. And I don't know how, what process, if you've been through a process like that, but... It's really tough to get them off from. Is it? Yeah. In fact, it's almost impossible. Because? Because the borough won't let you do it. OK. Yeah. Well, because getting those nine EAL kids off put the result up by 2%. So if there's nine kids who, you know, never attend or, you know, I'm sure we can, f there's a, where there's a will, there's a way. But it's not in the LEA's interest to keep children who've gone to Spain or are in prison or whatever on the roll, is it? It suppresses their overall results as well as ours. If people aren't doing what they said that they would do, look for... Middle managers, first of all, that you're key to Salisbury's improvement. Practice. Whether negative remarks or complaints are made informally or as jokes or seriously should all be taken seriously. And the more you take them seriously, the less they will occur. The schools appointed new heads of both science and English. In your team, think about who's who. Who have you got in your team? Innovators, very few. Innovators are people like Richard Branson, you know, people that have got innovation that is way up there, out of our league. You should be, you are, I am, in the 17%. You should be also in the 29% of early adopters, taking it on. 
put your energies into the early adopters, the people that are going to do it successfully. Because the resistors and the late adopters take more of your energy. Transformational change doesn't happen like that. Transactional change does. Transactional change is when you just agree to it and nod and comply. But transformation is around commitment and making the journey together, and that takes a bit longer. If you think of something as we're going, post-it notes are on the table. And how are you going to get the toughies on board? What's your strategy for that? Well, they either change or change. So you either change them or they go. What do I need? There comes a point in the journey where the question needs to be asked by the senior leadership team. Um, do you really want to be part of our journey? And then would you not be suited to be working elsewhere? Because this is where we're going. And if you can't do it, then is there something else that you need to be considering without it being constructive dismissal? Do you think there's enough SMT, SLT presence throughout the school, especially in the corridors? OK. I think in every single school that I've had any experience of, that's a question. So it begs an answer. If I'd had a £1,000 for each time I'd heard it, I'd be a considerably wealthier chap than I already am. But... Um, <laughs> I might be able to use the money to research the answer. With the, he the is through. quite good at recognising the staff in terms of rewards as well. Exactly. He gave staff with 100% attendance a bottle of the champagne. The thing that makes the difference in the classroom is you. The idea of praising people is very important and in every meeting one of the first items on the agenda is quality circle and you're asked to nominate members of staff who you think have done a particularly good job and, uh, and he writes to them, sends them what's known as a quality circle letter saying thank you. Again, quite an American idea, but um, one that is having an impact. What we've tried to organise and what I think we all have to do is, you know, going to sound like a bit of a pat response because it's kind of knocking it back to all of you, is that we all have to be on the corridors or as much as we possibly can. Because I basically really think, I suppose my answer is, one, two, seven people can't be everywhere all of the time. Five months in, and the LEA inspectors are here. Deborah Thompson and her team are carrying out joint observations with senior management to examine the standard of teaching and learning and ensure that the school's criteria match their own. When Trevor first arrived at Salisbury, he observed all teachers and judged most of the teaching to be satisfactory. For the teaching and learning more generally, what we found was of the ten lessons that we saw, two were good, four were satisfactory and four were inadequate. All the science lessons actually came out as... Um, the, in the inadequate, rather, were English and science. And there was real concern, I think, ab about provision in science. Um, I mean, within the English, the unsatisfactory lesson that we saw, Jessica, I mean, clearly uh, there's potential there and it's a question of support and, yeah. and you can see how that can be... Um, that, that teacher can be worked with, but science, there just feels to be a real issue about capability. About capability. Yeah. And what we were saying to Roger, I'll come more than that later, was there's a prior, absolute priority working with Angela but also with the support that he's got in from... London Challenge yeah. from, from, from us is to have a really clear idea about who might be OK, who might be workable with and who might actually need to be set targets with a view yeah. to you know, capability, really. No, I agree completely. And, and that seemed to be a, a no, no surprise to him, but something that was fairly urgent. I'm nearly at the end of my little list for, okay. for today. The contract obliges Trevor to report to the Chair of Governors every two weeks. Fresh from a visit to Edison's American parent company, he's concerned with branding. I mean, obviously, a name change in itself doesn't improve things, but, you know, it's kind of under new management, it's new branding, and no, I wasn't going to suggest Edison in the name. Good. Um, but Most just... of our schools are based on history. Like yeah. They're named after the area or yeah. the field that, that yeah. used to be there or the something. Yes. Yeah. Maybe ch choosing something less tied with the local history. You want the youngsters who are living in this fairly kind of stressed, immediate community to sort of look look above it, really, and have look... greater aspirations. Yeah, and and names do that. I mean, otherwise you 
you wouldn't choose them for products and for political parties and, you know, mm. uh, manifestos and things and raising everybody's expectations and status of the place. Yeah, I can see your point. I'm coming around to the idea. <laughs> Let's... The highest achieving school in the US under the Ed Edison umbrella is an all through school from age four through to 18 and it's called Renaissance. And we rather like that because it, it, it means something new and something changing and something more sophisticated. <laughs> Well done, that's great. Well done. Well done. You can definitely tell that it's more efficient, they're more, there's higher expectations. Along with that, there's some things I'm less comfortable with as a teacher, some of the, the glitz, but that's part of teaching nowadays. You, you need to reach a, a, an audience and some consumers. So I think generally it's better. I think on a selfish level as a middle manager, it, it, it has caused me a lot of extra work. But I think it's towards a good cause, generally. Max, another good year. Make sure it's the same in year nine. Chloe, we need to start. OK, well done. Shane, another part of this year. Sometimes, as a teacher, you can go for a very long time being dragged down by the negatives and not really seeing the positives. And I've certainly experienced a lot of positives recently. Well done, that's fantastic. Well done, young man. There you go. Don't spend it all at once. I found the, the senior management extremely approachable. But there's still a part of me that doesn't understand how much of it is them and how much of it is Edison. Um, I think things that come across that are quite different as the... It feels quite Americanised sometimes, that it's, it's more about aesthetics and it's more about positive feedback. But then that's a really good thing. But we're kind of not used to it. We're not used to being complimented for what we've done. Well done. That's brilliant. Well done. Fantastic. This way. That's great. I think in some ways this is the best year I've had in my teaching yeah. for a very long time. Yeah. And I've been teaching since 1979. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Salisbury's recently appointed head of science has just handed in his notice. Trevor's looking to replace him. Edison are now out of the honeymoon period. There are still two and a half years to go to assess whether this unique experiment in market-driven school management is an improvement on the current model. Well done. Well done.